I found this C-clamp featured on Thingiverse and I decided to print it. And then I realized I could add to it. I put a post on it like this so it would go into my bench, like a bench dog. And then I modified the end pieces so I could attach a dowel rod or a pointed one to hold a hole on a dowel rod or something similar. I'll show you all three of these designs on today's Filament Friday. And here's the clamp that was featured on Thingiverse by user Johan517. The clamp comes in three pieces and I loaded them into Simplify 3D. So all I needed to do was slice it. Now I'm going to print this on my FlashForge Dreamer using PLA so I only need the left extruder which is where I have PLA loaded. I don't need a raft, I don't need to generate support. A 0.2 layer height, three top and bottom layers, three shells, 30% infill. Uh, temperature wise I'm going to use 200 degrees for the filament and 60 degrees for the bed. Uh, cooling, I am going to have the fan on after the first layer and then 60 uh, millimeters per second for the speed. So I cl clicked on prepare to print. It sliced pretty quickly and it looked good but I always like to check it just by sliding down but there's no, looks like there's no missing pieces. So I slide it down just to look inside and it just, it looks fine. So I'm just going to print it and I did. And here it is. I got to tell you this came out really, really nice and it screwed together easily. I didn't have any cleanup to do. The end piece snapped right on. This is just a really good print and it works. It works really nicely. Let me show you on my miter sled. Now I built this miter sled in a previous filament Friday and holding small pieces of wood actually gets a little tough. So having a simple clamp like this is actually very handy. So I can clamp the wood and then go right over the saw just like this. So I like it. It's handy as can be. Now, I got thinking about it though. I've got these bench dogs that I use for clamping stuff on top of my bench. They go right into the hole and you can clamp stuff tight. So I thought, why couldn't I do that with this clamp? Just add a post so I could stick it in. I don't know if it's going to be useful, but I'm going to try it. So I brought the clamp into Tinkercad by just importing it. And then I went to work by adding the post. Now I measured the hole on my bench and it's 15.5 millimeter diameter. So I brought the ruler in and I changed this cylinder to 15.5 millimeters in both the X and Y direction. Now I need to turn it on its side. Uh, frankly, it's 20 millimeter height is perfect, by the way. But I turned it on its side 90 degrees. Then I brought the clamp over, turn that 90 degrees and line these two guys up and now I'm just going to bring them together and let them merge. So this is really a simple, simple print, a uh, simple exercise really in Tinkercad. But you get to use some of the tools like the Align tool. So I'm going to grab these two elements and then I'm going to click on the Align tool and now I can align it in the uh, center direction both X and Y or I guess Z and, and Y. Um, so it's centered to the clamp and now I just group these guys together and I can export it as a .stl, use the same slicing that I used uh, before and bring it into Simplify 3D. So here it is in Simplify 3D. Now this is going to need some supports because that post is kind of hanging up in the air a little bit. So I clicked on the support tool and selected build from or from build plate only. And I'm just using a default four millimeters. And this looked really good. It looked fine to me. And I'm not even going to use a raft under this like I normally like to do under supports because these are four millimeters wide. They're, they're bigger. It should print just fine. So I sliced this guy again with the same settings that I used on the first clamp. And here it is printed. <laughs> it came out nice, really nice. And look at this. It fits perfectly in a hole and I can pivot it. Now, I don't know how useful it is it's going to be. I don't know. I'll have to play with it. But it clamps a little piece of wood like this. So if I want to sand some edges on a molding, um, it's really handy to just be able to spin it around. But then I realized, what if I want to use a dowel rod or something like that? So I wanted to put, make new end caps. So I brought in the end cap piece, imported it just like I did the clamp. And then I duplicated it. And then I brought in the cylinder. And these things are just under 20 millimeters so I had to readjust this to 19.98 and I probably could have just went with 20 millimeters but I wanted to try to be exact and I brought it down to a smaller size and then brought the uh, uh, triangle piece for on top of it because this is going to cut a groove 
for like dowel rods to fit into. Because if I just use it flat, the dowel rods just kind of pop all over the place. So this is going to allow me to hold dowel rods on this clamp. And I made it a little bit longer at 22 millimeters and then stretched it out so I'd have a bigger um, gap. And then I centered the two and then grouped them together. And there's my new bottom for this insert piece. But I need to merge these two together. So I flipped it over, brought the original on top of it, and then I used the align tool to align these guys up. Of course, I brought the, the clamp up. So it's going to be a little bit taller than the original. But once I got these aligned, they fit perfectly together. And then I grouped them together and I had my piece. So this should be an easy print, although I will probably have to use supports underneath it. Then I wanted to use a pointed tip one. Now, I don't know how well this one's going to turn out. But uh, I, I used a cone to just make a point. And the whole idea behind this is if I've got something that's got a hole in it, I can poke in and center to that hole. Or if something I don't want to spin, it can poke into it. So I just sized this guy to, uh, this time I went 20 millimeters. I should have went um, back to that 19.98, but it turned out it didn't matter because I kind of sunk it inside the thing and it didn't stick out. So this ended up working uh, good. So I just grouped those two together after centering them. And now I had two different tips for my clamp. So now all I needed to do was to print these. I brought the two pieces into Simplify 3D and these are definitely going to need support. So I brought up the support tool and I tried one millimeter build from platform only and it produced supports but these look way too fine. I just don't think the printer is going to be able to handle it. So it was fun to try but I decided to just go back to two millimeters, generate supports, and this looks more realistic. I've used this setting before, so I'm comfortable with it. So then I was ready to slice these, and I used the same slice settings that I used on the previous two clamps. So here they are sliced, and you can see the support material. Now look at it. It's this zigzag. It doesn't look anything like what I suggested. And just to see how good this turns out, which I don't think it's going to turn out for this point at all, I said, screw it, let's just send it to the printer and see what it does. Um, I don't know why the slicer did this. To me, it should actually build a tighter web to support this. And once I printed it out, the dowel rod one came out perfectly. It holds it beautifully. The material broke away uh, for support. I loved it. And these things just pop right off. But now look at the pointed one. It's ugly. It's terrible. Now, it'll probably work, but I just don't like it. So the support was terrible. Now I did drill a hole in a dowel rod just to show what I was thinking about using a clamp to center on a location on a dowel rod or piece of metal that's got a hole in it. I find this kind of handy on other clamps and so that's why I did it. But here's an example of where I may use it. I, I don't know how useful this is, but I got one where I can stick it into the bench dog, clamp the piece of wood. And then if I need a special angle or something, I can clamp it with the other one against a real bench dog. Time will tell how much I actually use these clamps, but I found this to be a fun project. So there you have it, a couple of handy C-clamps, and I can make these bigger if I upsize everything, and it worked great with my miter sled. So if you like this project, give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe, and if you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to the little Patreon logo over here goes a long way. That's it for this week, and thank you to my Patreon supporters down here. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.